Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's one of those times of the day. If it's morning, I hope you're having a great morning. If it's afternoon, I hope you're having a great afternoon. And if it's evening, I hope you're having a great evening. So overall, I just want you to have a great day, tribe. Welcome, welcome to my channel. Everybody from the tribe and we are all um, um, <laughs> people of the way. I can't even talk. So uh, new subscribers, old subscribers, everybody's welcome. Okay, I thought I was going to go live, but I didn't know you had to have at least 50 subscribers to go live. So, huh, okay. Um, I just wanted this to be real, which I'm not going to edit anything because I want to um, just be who I am. Um, and what I mean by that, um, yesterday, well, it's been the last, say, month. I've been asking Daddy, what, what, do, what do you mean? tell people about me? What do I tell them about me? You know, cause I'm, I'm not a real per se private person, but then again, yes, I am. So, um, I think what he was trying to tell me is, you know, I'm, um, he started me to do this channel. Nobody knows who I am from Jack Daniels, you know? Oh, y'all might know who Jack Daniels is. Well, anyway, you may not know me from Appleseed. And, um, a lot of times, you know, when people don't know your experiences or, really th anything about you is like, who is she? What is she talking about? Who Who is this? Well, what he wanted me to do was share some of who Glory is. Um, I don't know how much he want me to share and what. I'm just going to let Holy Holy Spirit flow. Um, well, I will say, what I will say is um, this channel is real. I'm going to be real. I, I I mean, I don't know no other way to be anymore. I'm honest. I'm open. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. Um, as long as I'm not doing anything to harm anybody else, my life is my life. And my life is in the hands of my father. And whatever he tells me to do, he, uh, you know, I'm going to do. So I'm going to um, just start out by saying a prayer. Uh, father, I just say thank you for just being a loving, gracious father that you are. Jesus, I thank you for the grace that you have provided. And Holy Spirit, thank you for talking through me, showing me what to say, showing me the way. And with that, we just welcome everybody here. We want everybody that come to feel welcome. You are not judged. You are accepted because you are good enough. And with that prayer, we just say thank you. And here we go, guys. Okay. If you've not watched any of my other videos, um, my name is Glory. Um, actually, my name, given name at birth was Glory. Um, but my name was spelled with an I, G-L-O-R-I, not G-L-O-R-Y. Well, um, some years ago, my, 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 my father, which is my earthly father, um, told me to go and legally change my name from I and add the Y. Um, and I was like, okay, you know, and so... I kind of was hesitant to do it. I, I wasn't in the walk that I am with him now, so I wasn't really sure if it was him or it was just me wanting to do something. So one day my mother said to me, you ever thought about changing your... No, she's... I can't remember what it was, but she brought up my name being with the Y. And I was like, you know, I thought about doing that, but I didn't know if you would be offended. And she said, no, I wouldn't be offended. And I said, well, actually, the Lord told me to do it. She says, and so what are you waiting on? Like, okay, what's what's the problem? So that, that's that. So my name is Glory and something the Lord showed me, um, oh, maybe, I don't know, some years ago before he had me change my name with a Y, um, because in that he was going to make me add my maiden name in my name because my name was Glory J. Davis, uh, my married name. But before I was married, my name was Glory J. Huff. So, um, when he had me change my name from an I to a Y, he said, add Huff back in there. And I was like, okay, Glory J. Huff David Davis. And I was like, okay, you say do it. All right. At this time, I'm, I'm totally not in, in totally not walking away. I'm walking with him now. And so I did. And, uh, one day he said to me, pull the initials out. And I was like, Okay, and I pulled the initials out, and it's J J H D, and I, you know, not. I didn't told y'all I'm not the yellow crayon. I'm not even the orange. I'm somewhere, I guess, near the 
green, dark green, maybe, I don't know, not even a lime green, but anyway, I didn't understand it, and of course, him and his wisdom, and he said, okay, look at it, and I'm like, okay, so when I, I looked at it and didn't get it, Holy Spirit said, who's your father, I mean, he said, put, he said, God, I'm, actually, I don't remember at all, but what it ended up being is GJHD is God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, and daughter, blew my mind, blew my mind, blew my mind, um, this was in the beginning of this journey, kind of, and this was before I had changed my name. So when I changed my name, he told me to add the H in there. He said, because I already showed you or whatever. So anyway, that's who I am. I am the daughter. And uh, <laughs> I say that probably because I am daughter. And actually, some years ago, I met uh, through a friend of mine, uh, Minnie's sister. Her name was actually daughter. And I mean, her given name was daughter. And I was like, your name is daughter? And when I met daughter... I met daughter when she was, I think, 93. And that's a whole nother video. But she was 93. And that, that number is significant to me that God gave me some years ago about age 93 or 93. So I was like, wow, daughter. So anyway, that being said, um, that's who I am. Um, this channel is basically to introduce people to father and to my Lord Jesus. Um, some years ago, God told me that I am Jesus. He told me that I am Jesus. And so I'm like, I'm Jesus. Really? I wrote a book and I'm not trying to sell my book, but it's called, it's all about me. Anyway, in that book, I'm telling you that Jesus, I mean, that God told me that I am Jesus. No, I didn't understand it. Not at all. Because I'm like, I'm Jesus. How? I, I'm not going to say that. I can't say that. People are going to jump me in. Who are you? Go part to see. You know how people can come and tell you some of the craziest stuff. Go, if you Jesus, go do this, do that. That stuff don't phase me now. I am Jesus. Um, I just didn't have the relationship that I have now with God, the Father, at that time. At that time, I still knew him as God. Truth be told, I was, be told I was scared of him. Um, I thought he was just a punisher. I thought he just wanted to punish me for whatever I did wrong. I always thought he was watching me and ready to, you know, just like throw a wand at me and smack me in the head or stomp me or whatever because I just thought he was a mean, judgmental guy. I'm speaking about all this in the book. You can still go get the book. It's on Amazon. It's called It's All About Me, The Spiritual Journey. So anyway, I was introduced to God as father and I grew up without a father. And as we get into more videos, I'll share some more about that. But I think it's just supposed to be a short synopsis of, of, my, of who I am. So you'll know I'm just not some willy-dilly coming and telling you this or giving you that or just saying anything I want to say. No, I just can't say anything I want to say. I've been in the church realm all my life. I mean, all my life. Uh, different denominations. I won't go into that. But right now, I'm just glory. I just walk this earth as Jesus walked. No denomination, no, I'm not putting a label on me or anything. I am here for people. Jesus was there for people. And yes, they called him a sinner. And maybe you may end up calling me that because I hang out with people. It doesn't matter. Unconditional love is unconditional love. I judge nobody. I've never been a judgmental person, but I really, I don't judge anybody. I love everybody. I have nothing against anybody. And um, I just want everybody to feel, to know who Father is, to know who he is, to know who Jesus is, the freedom that you have in Jesus. Um, I was married. I'm divorced. I'm going to be speaking about that on this channel. I'm going to be talking to married women who are in these trap marriages and so unhappy and you feel like you, you, you're just trapped and you're not trapped. You got Jesus. I probably would have did things different if I knew now, but the Lord know that I didn't know now. So in my journey, the, my father had me leave my husband um, so that he can develop me because where I was, I found out now uh, at that state, I, he, he, he couldn't have. He, he just couldn't have. I had too much going on in my life. I had too much where I couldn't even focus on him. I was too busy focused in my mind. And do you know that the transforming of your mind, the word tell you, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what I have found out is what you think or what you thought about, that's your actions. That's what you're going to do. And at that time, 
uh, God was not number one in my life. And to be honest, my husband was number one in my life. I moved to a place I knew nobody but my husband. Uh, I had no family around, no relatives. And, and, and it was really hard. And I did not even realize how hard it was until after I left the, left the stress that I was under. And, you know, I, I'm not on here to beat up anybody or anything like that. But I am going to share some of my story because... Um, people are, uh, women are, are hungry for, for themselves. And a lot of marriages, women get lost and they lose who they are in their marriages, lose identity. And your identity is in you. You can change nothing or no one, Let, but yourself. Let me say this. Let me put a little, a rabbit hole in there. When you meet a man from now on, women and, and myself, cause I'm divorced now, when you meet a man, realize who that person is is who that person is. They're going to be who they are. So if you see things about this particular individual, and this is for, for men too, because this channel is just not for, 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 for women. It's for men and women. They are who they are. So if you see things that you don't feel like you can live with, that that with that person there you know some of their behaviors or characteristics or whatever if you can't live with that the rest of your life then you need to leave because they're not going to change only person can and you're not going to change them that's the bottom line i don't care how the good of a person you know you you call yourself going to be how good of a wife you try to be try to be the best husband they're going to be who they are that's just the bottom line they're going to be who they are. And we shouldn't be trying to change anybody anyway. And when you go in a relationship trying to change somebody, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's really not going to work. So my, my, God is, God is using me and, 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 and I, I speak, say God sometimes, but most of the time I say father, cause that's who he is. He's father. I, I didn't grow up with a father in my life. And when he introduced me, to him as father, because I still wasn't real cool with God. But when he introduced me as himself to me as father, let me tell you, my whole world changed. I mean, totally changed. And in the beginning, y'all, I wouldn't even, I, I only talked to father. I still was like, I don't want to deal with God. I, I don't, I ain't real comfortable with him. Yes, I know they're the same person, but in my head somewhere, I, I he, let me tell you, he meets you where you are. When he meets you where you are, that's so true. He truly meets you where you are. And that's where I was. So in that, anyway, I, you may hear me say daddy. You may hear me say father. You may hear me say Abba. That's my heart. Then you're going to hear me talk about my Lord Jesus all the time. Because that's my jam. And Holy Spirit. Mm. But let me tell you, nothing could happen without being Jesus. And in this journey, I'll share some of that with you about him telling me I am Jesus because I am Jesus, y'all. I walk this earth as Jesus as he is, so am I. That's what the word says, but I had to learn it in my heart. Because see, to me, you know, when he told me that, I'm like, Jesus, I ain't perfect. Jesus was perfect. How can I be perfect? Well, I grew up under religion, so I'm thinking, here we go again. I got to do this right. I got to behave right. How are you going to tell me, Jesus? I can't, even, I can't even think right. I can't do anything right. So how are you telling me I'm Jesus? Well, y'all, it ain't about being perfect because we'll never be perfect. Never be perfect. And my friend, Shelly, I was talking to her yesterday, and she just opened something up to me that was just crazy because all, during all this time, even though I've I've come to the point where I don't care what anybody say about me, think about me, whatever. My father said I am Jesus, then that's who I am. Do you gonna are you gonna see signs, miracles, and wonders? You got to. You got to. He said greater works what we do. So I expect it. It's gonna happen. Am I still new in this journey? Yeah, but I'm comfortable with who I am. He showed me, no, you're not Jesus in the physical. You're not him in, 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 in the flesh. No, in your spirit, you've always been him. You just got to bring him out. So anyway, I still had this thing in the back of my head. And it was a problem why I really didn't want to do this, this video. And I'm like, dang. Daddy, I ain't, I ain't perfect. He's like, I know, baby. I done told you. you. It ain't about that. Well, it really sunk in just on yesterday. And that's kind of what, what gave me the courage to come on here today and tell some of this stuff because 
I'm all over the place, but I'm a background person. And, and Father knows I'm a background person. I don't like being in the front. I don't like a lot of attention. Every church I was in, I tell people, don't label me. I'm not elder. I've had people try to, uh, you know, try to uh, uh, ordain me as this. And I'm like, no, I'm just glory. I'm just glory. Because I'm real. I'm real. And I didn't feel that in my heart. So I wasn't just going to let anybody tell me this is who you are. And some of them were probably right, but I, I had to know it. So anyway, yesterday I was talking to Shelly and she said something refer in reference to herself. And she said, you know, I've, I've tried to be perfect. I can't remember how she said it, but this is what it was. She said, because being perfect is, she said, behind perfect is fear. And I said, Shelly, what, wait, wait, what did you say? She said, behind perfect is fear. I can't be perfect at this. All that is is fear keeping me from going forward because behind being perfect is fear. Nobody can be perfect. Let me tell y'all, that hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, oh my daddy, this is what you've been telling me, but I did. Father, we use, I mean, y'all, I've been on this journey mm, when I first went to that conference was in 2016 when I really faith hit Faith, he, he opened my heart to faith. I've been on that this journey since then. I still couldn't understand the perfect part, you know, telling me I am Jesus. What was behind it was fear. <laughs> of course, the only person, person perfect is Jesus. But see, when you think you got to be perfect in doing anything, that's nothing but fear behind that. I don't care. You got to make a perfect document. And I think she was speaking about something about work or something. I, you can't even do a, this video is never going to be perfect. Nothing is going to be perfect. But if you don't do it because you're wanting it to be perfect, that's just fear. Let me tell y'all something that just blew my mind. And I was like, whoa, Shelly, whoa. And I said, that's so profound. Well, when I got off the phone with her, I'm like, Daddy, he said, that's what I've been trying to tell you all the time. But see, it's just, it's, it still was so simple in her, just so simple, she, just so simple. And I was like, oh, I'm doing a video tomorrow. I, I, it doesn't matter. I don't care what, what fear I have, what, what, what I am, it's not going to be perfect. And it's not. So let me tell you, I went to try to do a live, right? Because I was like, okay, daddy, you say, Holy Spirit, just let it flow. And I said, well, if I got a, if I do it on video, I may end up, uh, you know, like trying to edit it or something, trying to, you know, because I will try to fix it and it ain't supposed to be fixed. Yeah, my dialect may be crazy. I may, I, I'm not a linguist. So it's just going to be what it is. So I was like, okay, I tried to go live and the, and the, and the YouTube said, you, you, you can't go live. You don't even have, and I was like, why? I wonder why. So I went to read on um, Safari, you know, on, on the internet. Well, why can't I do a live? And it was like, cause you had to have at least 50 subscribers. And I just laughed. I was like, oh, oh okay. So here we go with the video. So here I am guys. So um, let me just say, I'm going to be, uh, doing dreams. Now, I didn't know I couldn't, I, well, I can interpret dreams, but I didn't know I even dreamed or whatever. And I did a video about that a couple, two or three videos ago. And on March 1st, I've been dreaming almost every night, two and three. And I'm like, whoa, he gave me one that I've already interpreted that I put on there. I think it's like go to LA and have those babies or something. I labeled it. I don't know. But anyway, that's what it was about. Well, I have a video that I'm going to do next Saturday. And so I was like, okay, you want me to do the next the video that I've been working on for a couple of weeks? And he said, yeah, you're going to do that next Saturday before Easter because it's a resurrection video and I'm trying to resurrect some this group of people. And I said, okay, daddy, okay, okay. And I was like, well, what do I do? The live and he said you're going to talk about yourself because you need to let people know who you are you've got background in me you have just learned and having a relationship with me before i was religious y'all i was so religious i was just all in the religion this that let me tell you i grew up thinking red was for hoes no i'm serious i didn't wear a lot of red because as i was growing up um, red, you know, you seen somebody in red and red lipstick, that's a hole or whatever. And I'm not going to get into all that. But anyway, 
I am so out of religion. I am so free. And he wants people to be free. And what other way to free people than to use people who are free? I'm not comfortable in front of the camera. I'm so nervous right now, y'all. But, you know, I just got to go and do what he say. Oh, see the shirt? Jasmine Lee Music. I told y'all in one video, I'm going to wear it in every video until my daughter does what she's supposed to do. Her name is Jasmine. And until she... Jasmine Lee Music. Do what she do. I'm going to wear the shirt every time I do a video. Uh, I will watch it, but I'm going to wear it. So, Jasmine, to you. Anyway, so I'm going to come on. I'm going to be doing dream interpretation. Uh, my background is mental health counseling. Uh, so uh, even in that, I'm going to start doing some coaching. Um, I have a certification in life coaching. Um, I have a degree in mental health uh, counseling. And you know, all of that stuff to me, I'm kind of like Paul. I, I just went to school, went to school. And what good is it? It didn't, it, it, it wasn't what God wanted me to do, but he will use it, you know? And I've always been an encouragement person. I've always been an encourager. I always believed in people. I always try to, you know, push people to do their best. And ain't that Jesus? So in, in my walk, you know, um, I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm make blunders and it's all good. It's all good because you know, my favorite scripture is Romans 8 and 28. And we know all things work together for good. To those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. I may read scriptures. I may not read scriptures. But trust me, you will see my heart and you will see that I love my father. I love Jesus. I love Holy Spirit. And I'm going to do what my father tell me to do. This message that I have coming up this, this Saturday on the 8th, the day before Easter, Resurrection Sunday, the day before this message is going to probably have some people saying, who is she? She ain't saved. She ain't this. Get out of it. Get your head out of religion. Open your hearts and hear what daddy is saying because it's time out for that. Y'all, I have... I have been in church all my life and I'm not knocking church because you need to go to the local church. You need to. There's some things that um, God has put his shepherds in place that they will feed you that you need to hear. I went to church last Sunday and let me tell you something. That word was so good and the way he gave it, I never even looked at it in, in that perspective and in, in, in that realm. It was so good. I've never sat down and heard a word where I actually felt like I was actually eating it and tasting it. I felt like I was actually eating something. And it wasn't a lot of, it was just Jesus. It was just the love of Jesus. That's what it's supposed to be. You should not go to church feeling beat up, beat down, and, 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 and dragged out. Or why you sitting there under condemnation. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, 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 no. Jesus said there is now no more condemnation. Let me tell you something. I'm coming at y'all straight up with the gospel. He said, "He, for, you are forgiven for your sins, past, present, and future. So let me tell you right now, I don't focus on behavior. I don't focus on sins. Why? If I'm sin conscious, then there's nothing else. No, I'm Jesus conscious. I'm forgiven conscious. Will I sin? Yeah, I probably sin sometime today, but I don't focus on that. And if that's what you want to focus on, this is not the channel for you. If that's what you're coming for, this is not the channel. You need to go somewhere else where somebody is, is, is pointing out to you or telling you this. We don't need anybody telling us when we sin or when we wrong. You know. Let me say this, and this is this is something. Um, I'm just going to say it. Yeah, Daddy, I'm going to say it. One thing my husband said to me, God told me I could leave my husband a year before I left. It was really hard. After that process, one day I was saying something to my husband, and he was walking away from me, and he turned around and he looked at me. And he said, you don't think I know when I do wrong? I know when I do wrong. That right there probably sunk the... Get, get your butt out of here. But the thing about it is, what I'm saying is, I use that example not to beat up on him at all. I use that example to show you people know when they're doing wrong. So why they need to come to church? Why they need me on here telling them what they're doing wrong and what they're not doing? That is not my business. It is not my business. I don't care. And I don't mean it like that, but I don't. I don't need to come on here telling you don't drink, don't smoke, don't. That is not my business. You take that to Father. He will tell you. 
He will tell you it's going to be, you know, my daddy told me it's going to be people in heaven that, that smoke, people in heaven that, 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 that do blunt. It's going to be people in heaven that's, that's homosexual. Yeah. And that's what the message is coming out about. But anyway, it's going to be people in heaven with all these things because we are not perfect. We will never be perfect. No, we don't try to sin. We don't try, but it, that, that's not even it. We're done with that. This channel is about unconditional love because Jesus love. You never heard Jesus downrating anybody. Even like the woman with the issue of blood. He, I mean, not with the issue of blood, at the, at the well. He knew this woman had five husbands. She was doing whatever she do. Even the woman they brought in front of him who was caught in the act of adultery. Did he downrate her? That woman left feeling just as good. And I tell you what, ain't she the one that, I, I, I'm not sure, but I, Think she's the one that went and got the oil and came back and anointed his feet with the oil, getting him ready for his burial. He didn't downgrade her. He let her know she was loved. Baby, we all make mistakes, but I love you. And that's what this channel is about. So y'all come on back and be a part of the tribe and uh, the people of the way. Because we all about love. We all, we, we're all inclusive. We like everybody. And we love everybody. And everybody is welcome to this channel. So that's who I am. Uh, yeah, I, I was in church for so many years. And, you know, I got to a point one time where I had a lot of church hurt. People say it ain't real. Well, that's to them. For me, it was real. I had some church hurt and I didn't go to church for seven years. You hear that? Seven is completion. And I used to think if you ain't in church, you ain't covered. This, that, that. Daddy said, I got you. I'm covering you. I'm going to teach you. Now, I visited places or whatever, but I was never a, I was not a member of anybody's church. I was just fed up. I, no more. I'm done. I've tried this. I've done this. I'm, I'm trying to do. And you hear what I'm saying? I tried. I tried to do the right thing. And it seemed like the more I tried, the worse it would get. <laughs> so, no, it ain't even about that. It's not the how, about ba behavior modification training. If you want to do behavior modification, I can't even say it, behavior modification then you need to go to a mental health facility or maybe a counselor that's going to do. This is about mind transformation. When you renew your mind and know who God is and get that relationship, he'll take care of all of that. Even if it's things you, let me tell you something. I used to smoke, right? And when I was in religion, I'd go and smoke and blow the smoke out the window or smoke before I got to church, wash my hands and have mints and putting stuff. So why I do all that? For what? Who can put me in hell? Nobody but Jesus. But that's a part of religion. That's a part of religion. One time I remember I had smoked and I went to church and it was this program and um, it was some singers or something there. And the guy called me and he was like telling me kind of like you got an anointing and he didn't tell me in front of everybody I smoked. But he said, but you're doing something that you know you don't need to do. You, you, you're doing something and he's bent next to me. He said, I smell it. Let me tell you, I was so under condemnation. So my brother's a pastor and, you know, and now I, I mean, I love my brother, but I don't, I can take counsel, but God told me, you get the final word from me. Daddy said, I am the final word. But back at that time, I'm still in religion. So I called my, my brother and I was like, am I going to go to hell because I smoke? And he said, no. He said, now you might get there quicker. I mean, you may get cancer or disease, but you, but you ain't, you ain't not saying because you smoke. And, you know, I was kind of like, well, that made sense. Well, and that's just part of the journey, y'all. And I'll be sharing some of that stuff. But I'm just trying to give y'all, you know, people people, people need to hear your testimony. They hear, somebody is listening to this thinking, oh, I ain't going to hell because I smoke. No, you ain't going to hell because you smoke. That may not be good for you. Like a lot of things ain't good for you, but you're not going to hell. And I'm running around hiding and doing, God seen me the whole time. But I'm thinking about people. They're going to smell it. They gonna, I don't care about people anymore. It's all about my father. What I, I don't mean I don't care. I don't care what people think. As long as I'm not hurting you. And if I do, you tell me, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to hurt people. But as far as what glory does, 
your opinion. It's your opinion. Because if daddy tell me I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm okay. And um, I feel like, like that about you. You may do some things that I may not do. But if you and daddy okay, y'all okay. Because it's about a relationship. And trust me, when you got a relationship, y'all. I ain't gonna cry on this video because I cry all the time. It's so beautiful. And a daddy? Oh my. Y'all have always wanted a father. Always. I would look at other people and be like, they so lucky. And then if they had problems, you know, I'd be like, dog, they so. But I didn't know it was luck. It was just a blessing. You know, and I just like, dog. Let me tell you. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if my, I, I know she'll remember. But I'm going to tell a little bit of my daughter's business. When when she had her first breakup with her, with a boyfriend that she truly cared about. She ain't called me. And that's my girl. That That's my girl. Let me tell you something. That's, that's my girl. Now, she know I'm mama. I know she daughter. But let me tell you something. That's my girl. She called her daddy. And when I found out, I'm thinking, well, why she called her daddy? I'm the girl. Because you need a daddy's love. You need that. I, I don't know what she, but she needed a daddy. And y'all, a lot of wrong choices I did and made was because I didn't have a father. When me and my husband was going through, I didn't have a daddy. And let alone anybody because, I mean, everybody I knew in this place I lived was, I met because of him. Or because, I didn't go to school there. I mean, I'm here and I know nobody. And God got me in that situation now. I'm in a place where I know nobody. But see, right now, it's different. You get what I'm saying? When I was, oh, Lord, whoa, Holy Spirit, thank you. When I went to a place before and I knew nobody, all I had was my husband. He was my life. Everything was around him. Everything was focused around him. I'm in a place right now where I know nobody. I have no relatives or nothing. Daddy told me to come here. But what is my focus? Around him. He's my God. He's my everything. He said there would be no idols before him. And I had kind of made my husband a God. Whoa. Whew. Okay, anyway, hey, y'all, I am, I've never been so happy in my life. I am, I know I look good, y'all. I'm 62. Yeah, I look good. Turn that around. I look 26. I've never been so happy in my life. I have not. I am so content. I am so at peace. I am just so pleased with glory. I didn't even love glory anymore. I didn't even really like glory. I love glory because glory is glory. Yeah, y'all, I ain't perfect, but it's I am who I am. And that's all I can be, who I am. And Daddy said, I am daughter. Daddy said, I am Jesus. Daddy also gave me individually one. We gonna get into all that stuff down the way. But I just need y'all to know who I am. Yes, I got experiences. I've been chief finance officer in the church, chief operation officer over this. I mean, I've been the gamut of it all. So it's not like I'm coming to you just willy-nilly, just out of my own thoughts. No, God has given me experiences and those experiences, some of them were very hurtful. And let me tell you something. I was looking at something today because I, I had wrote in my Bible one time about, I can't find it. When he told me I was Jesus and I found something, I thought it was in John. I love the book of John. Just so, probably because John said he was the beloved, you know, the disciple of Jesus love. And I said, when I get to heaven, John, let me say something to you. Mm -mm. I'm the one Jesus love. I'm the daughter. I'm the one daddy love. I'm the one Jesus love. I'm glory. I'm God's glory. Okay, anyway. So I was looking for it and I couldn't find it. And, it, and I had wrote on the side, because I write a lot on the side, dates and all kind of stuff to come to my head. And so I had wrote in there, how can I be perfect, daddy? Only Jesus is perfect. Why am I that? And I had a question mark. I can't find it. And so I was looking for it so that I can share it with y'all. Well, this is what I ran into. I was like, okay, daddy, you're so strategic. Um, I ran into a sermon at a church that I went to. And I hope you're watching this too. Uh, it was the first Sunday in ministry of this church. It was their first Sunday launching. And the title of the message was Ready, Set, Go. It was done on 11-26-2000. Okay, let me tell y'all what that hit me like a 
ton of bricks. Listen to the title, Ready, Set, Go. 11 26 2000. Next week, watch my video next week with the message that he gave me. He gave me a dream 11 26 2020. I didn't even know I dreamed then. I had to go look for it in a journal. He said, I gave you a dream in 2020. I told you to write down. I wrote it down all flippant, half heartedly. I don't dream. What am I write it down for? Well, I did do it. At that time in 2020, you know, during the pandemic, it wasn't nobody but me and Jesus. Y'all, it would be weeks I ain't talked to nobody. I didn't see nobody. I done moved to Vegas. I'm in Vegas. I, the pandemic hit not too long after I got there. I couldn't go. I went to help with my mom. I couldn't see her. I mean, I made to call her on the phone. They wouldn't. It's just, just, let me tell you something. God just done did so much. I am so thankful for it all. But anyway, so I went back and I found it in this journal. And I was like, okay. So he's showing me, um, well, he's giving me the interpretation. I've been doing it for two weeks because this is all new to me. So just give me grace next week in the video. But the date of it is 11-26-2020. So when I was looking for something else and I ran to this, ready, set, go, 11-26-2000. And it was the first Sunday that this ministry launched. I was like, what are you saying? He's telling me, and this was the scripture. It was Luke 5 and 4. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, who was Simon? Simon Peter. Simon, okay. I'll great go somewhere else for that. Okay, let me get back on it. When he had stopped speaking, this is Jesus. He said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. What did he tell him? He was going to be catch a fisher of men. I'm, this is so significant for me because I told y'all I'm not a, I'm not a out in the front person. Daddy is telling me, Hey, it's time. I don't care. You start the channel. I started it, stopped it. I'm uncomfortable. I don't like this being in the front of cameras. I don't like being in the front. He said, no, it's time to go. And he told me last week, it's time to go. And I was like, okay, I'm a little nervous, but okay. When I opened my Bible to this ready, set, go, and then the scripture, and then it was the first Sunday of this ministry, their first, this is kind of like my first, oh, <laughs> I hope that you're watching this because 20 years ago, I had no idea because 20 years ago, back then, even this bishop who preached this Sunday, um, who, 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 who did this sermon that first Sunday, Ready, set, go, 11, 26, 2000. He had no idea, but he used to tell me, do you know your name is Glory? Do you know? He used to say stuff to me. I'm like, ah, I ain't got nothing in me. Oh, okay. I hope you're seeing this. Because let me tell you something. Ready, set, go. And you take that how you take it. Ready, set, go. Luke 5 and 4. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Y'all, we can ready to have some fun. Y'all can ready to see. We can ready to have some fun. And, um, okay, I'm going to get off of here. Uh, I love y'all. I don't know what I said and what I didn't say, what I was supposed to say. I guess I said it. And it'll be coming videos, you know, and I'll say what he tell me to say and how he started having me interpret these dreams because he also gave me the gift of interpretation when I was in, 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 um, actually mm, he gave that to me in 2020. First time I ever in a church ever interpreted. Let me tell you something. Just trust him. I'm telling you, let me, let me, let me, let me see. Let me give y'all this, what he gave me. Um, let me see. Psalms 37 and 5. I'm not sure what translation it is, but listen to this. This is what he said to me. He gave me this scripture. Give God the right to direct your life. And as you trust him along the way, you'll find he poured it off perfectly. Oh my. I just realized he poured it off perfectly. What did I just tell y'all about the <clears throat> My daddy's so strategic. Tell me he ain't. Tell me he ain't everything. I got the best daddy in the world. And then what's so bad about it? I can share him with y'all. He ain't just my daddy. Now, in the beginning, I was a little jealous. And I said, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. you mine. 
I laugh about that now. I'm like, you so silly. And I was like, mm -hmm. he my daddy. He mine. I, he had to, no, he had to minister to me about that. I'm big enough. I'm going to still be yours. You're not giving any of me up by sharing me or talk, you're not giving any of me up. I'm big. And he is. And I mean, I want y'all to have a relationship with him. But he my daddy. How you take it is how you take it. But I'm letting you know, he wants to be your daddy. He wants to be your mother. He wants to be that missing brother, sister, aunt, uncle. He wants to be your family. And he was my family all along, and I just didn't know it. But Lord, do I know it now, Jesus. Okay, I love y'all. Uh, come back next Saturday, see my video. I know this is kind of long, but I tried to do it live, and I didn't have enough subscribers to do it live. That's funny to me. <laughs> I know I'm silly. But anyway, y'all, hey, I'm going to go eat my corn. Um, I don't have nothing else to eat, so I'm just going on the cob. And uh, enjoy the rest of my day. And um, hey, no, I love y'all. Jesus loves you more. Please come back next Saturday. He got a word. He got a word. And this is based, it's for everybody, but it's basically for the LGBTQ community. <laughs> he love y'all. He love y'all. All right. All right. Bye.